Our next guest is here, and she is the local author behind a beloved children's chapter book series. I know, I can't wait. Uh, Brooklynite Abby Hanlon created the character Dory Phantasmagory. I love it. It's a child with a big imagination and even bigger personality. She just released her sixth book in the Dory Phantasmagory series. It is called, what is it called? One more time. Dory, Dory Phantasmagory can't, can't live without, without you. you. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Maddie saw how to say it three times. Abby <laughs> Hamlin joining us live now. Hello and welcome to Hi, New York Living. New York's very own Westchester born, Westchester Brooklyn, yeah. raised. We love it. Thanks for having me. I'm so happy to be here. With this you is a guys. lot of fun for us. Uh, can we start with the, uh, the impetus to write this series, this book? Who is this Dory? with this multi-syllabic last name. <laughs> <laughs> so Dory is a um, very energetic, scruffy um, kid with a big imagination. And the books are about her everyday problems of being six years old and the youngest in her family. But they're also about her big imagination and the characters that she invents. Yeah. No, I love, it seems like an almost seamless transition because upon research, mm -hmm. we find that you were, before a highly successful children's book author, you were a New York City school teacher. Right. You're here. Yep. And it seems almost natural because you're observing the contents of your book right. day in and day out while teaching. How did, was it an easy pivot? What was the catalyst to say, I'm leaving this behind, but I'm going to kind of keep it in the same channel with children's books? So I was a first grade teacher, and um, <laughs> when I was a teacher, I loved um, the part of the day where the kids were writing stories, and they were using words and pictures to make stories, and then turning their stories into little published books. And I started to get a little bit jealous and thought, hey, I think I can do this too. So I literally just like went home after school one day and tried to basically do what they were doing. But I didn't know how to draw. I love this. So that was a challenge. <laughs> the, it was so funny because I read in, in an article that, <laughs> you, first of all, you encountered a lot of no's mm -hmm. That's uh, right. because of the drawing. And you sent it to several publishers. And finally, someone was like, go take some drawing classes. <laughs> and they come back to me. But like, I appreciate it because it didn't deter you. Yeah. You went and you took the drawing classes. And it kind of almost, to me, is like you're writing the children's books to make them say, to, to make the kids think, yeah, okay, you know, th this is normal. Uh, you, you write it from a kid's brain and, but then you're also teaching them a lesson with, or teaching us a lesson within that yeah. lesson. And that's a, one of yeah. resilience and perseverance. That's, I mean, that's so nice of you to say. And I think that it was this kind of blind determination where, you know, I didn't even know how to draw stick figures. Like, I was 28 years old. I hadn't drawn since I was probably, like, in fifth grade. Yeah. And so I bought a book to, that teaches kids how to draw stick mm -hmm. figures and um, bought my first sketchbook, and then I drew and drew. I'm still, you know, I still struggle as an artist. Um, I mean, I'm sure every artist would say that, but <laughs> I still feel like I don't know how to draw. Um, but I'm just, like, always kind of winging it, and I just... I, when I was thinking of the stories, I wanted to do the pictures of with course. the stories. Yeah. You were also a mother of two. That's right. So I have twins um, who are now 16, but when I started the series, they were five. And um, I started the series because um, at the time I was kind of looking for um, the perfect book, which is they, you know, they, we had tons of chapter, ton, tons of picture books and um, we were kind of looking for that perfect chapter book that has tons of illustrations yeah. and characters their age and that was funny and relatable. Yes. And I was like, why can't I find this book? So I, um, you know, started writing the first book and my kids actually um, kind they of collaborated. That was your, oh, I was going to say you could test it out on them. They were everything. They and, were everything. They were the guinea yeah. pigs. They were the, they the source of control. content. They helped you with the ideas. They were inspiration. They were editors. They were writers. They did it all with me. And they still, they still sort of do. They're it's a family books. affair. That's right. And to that extent, what do you hope that, because, you know, it's, it's a book for, for children, but for, for their parents as yeah. well. So what do you hope that the family takes away from Dory Phantasmagory and, and the experience? Well, that's, um, yeah, it's nice because, like, I do have a lot of parents who love the books, too. Um, so I think um, what I love hearing most is that, like, we, I put so many of the jokes from our family into the books, and now <laughs> these become other people's family jokes, which is so it. cool. And um, 
I get a lot of letters from kids that say, you know, they, they read the book 20 times, and um, which I, I think is great that it's a book that you want to revisit. And I, um, based on the letters that I get, I think I, I have just as many boy readers as girls. There so you know. I think that's awesome. Influencing a generation of readers, which is so important. We love everything about it. Abby, thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. It was great to be here. Great to have you. Dory Phantasmagory, Can't Live Without You, is out now, and you can find it wherever you get your books.